Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Weierstrass factorization theorem, which addresses the following question. Here's a question. Given a sequence of complex numbers, a n, n goes from 1 to infinity, which tend to infinity So the modulus of a goes to infinity. Can we find an entire function which vanishes at these points? Which vanishes at these points? Okay, great. So to do this, we already talked about the Weierstrass elementary functions, and we're going to use those functions now in a special way, okay? Now, one thing we should mention is we want to recall what they are, first of all. So recall, recall that e0 of z is 1 minus z, and e p of z is what? Is 1 minus z exponential of z plus z to the p over p. And they have the property that if you're inside the disk, we have this estimate over here. We have the estimate that e p z minus 1 is less than or equal to z to the power of p plus 1 if the modulus of z is less than 1. We proved that in a previous video. Okay? And so this is going to help me determine when the product converges. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to build a function over here and then tell you what the conditions on pn have to be. Okay? So let's consider the following function. So here's a potential answer. Let's consider the function phi of z, which is z to the m, okay? For m, so maybe, maybe zero is in this sequence for a whole bunch of things, right? So I'm gonna take care of zero in a special way, right? So z to the m times the product. We can't preclude it from not being in the list, right? n goes from one to infinity. And then e p n of z over a n, right? And I should also admit, zero is always a little bit funny because you can't, we should plug in zero of these things, you don't get zero, or you get one, and I can't look at z n over, I can't look at z n over z n of z over zero, so I have to put the zero out separately, right? So maybe uh, it also happened to vanish on the set of this points, including zero. So I, have to, I can't exclude zero from this calculation, I have to sort of build it in. So let's just keep it built in, right, and then address that. It's not gonna affect anything, it's just, it's just a polynomial, right? So it's completely fine. Right? And so I'm going to consider this function. So of course, this, this function phi vanishes at 0 to power m, right? So I, let's include 0 in this calculation. And it also va vanishes where? At all these a n. I have to make sure it converges though, right? We have to make sure it converges. So we know that this series infinite product converges. absolutely and uniformly, provided what? If the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of modulus e p n of z over a n minus 1 converges absolutely uniformly. Now I can control this series, right? Our series over here, we can control this. By what? By our estimate over here, because eventually what? Eventually, if we're less than one, I want these things to be getting smaller than one, right? So and I want, what do I need? I need z minus a is what? Is less than one, right? So now let's start to put some conditions on this. We control this by, control this by considering modulus of z less than r, okay? That will control z, okay? And if, if I can do this for all r, I'm in good shape, right? Modulus of z less than r, and I need to assume that modulus of a n is also bigger than what? Is bigger than r. Because then, what can we say? Then this implies that modulus of z over a n is less than what? Well, z is less than r, 
And then an is less than what? An is less than r, right? So an is an is bigger than r, so 1 over an is less than r, right? So that's less than what? That's equal to 1, actually. Equal to 1. Okay? So, good, I can now use what? I can now use this estimate. So if z is less than r and modulus an is bigger than r, I know that's eventually going to happen, right? That's going to happen for n large enough, right? n large enough. Okay, good. Then what can we say? Then we can say what? Then we can say that our series over here, our sum n goes from 1 to infinity of e p n z over modulus a minus 1 is less than or equal to the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of what? Of r, right? So modulus r over modulus a n to what? To the p n plus 1, right? And so if I choose my pn correctly, we, can, we will show that this is going to converge, right? So in particular, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to choose pn, show you how the Weierstrass construction goes, we're going to choose pn to be n minus 1, or just pn to be n, right? Good. If pn is equal to n, then this becomes what? This becomes the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of, mod, of r over modulus a n, just the n plus 1. Okay? Good. And what do I know? I know actually that for a fixed value of r, we can assume that a is bigger than 2r, right? So for a fixed value of r, note, if r is fixed, for a fixed value of r, I can choose a n to be bigger than what? To be bigger than 2r, right? Provided that n is bigger than or equal to n capital, right? For so, so deep enough in this series, I'll get this estimate over here, right? So past n. That's great now because that says that, a, that r over n is less than a half, right? So if we make that choice of this, this is less than or equal to what? This is going to be bounded by the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of r, of r now bounded by 1 half to the 2n plus 1. And that's definitely a convergence series, right? So this is true uh, up to n plus 1. So this goes to n plus 1 plus the other what? I should be a little more careful. Say that's this tr it's put 2 to the n plus 1 plus a finite sum, right? This is uniformly convergent, right? So this converges, it tells me that our series converges absolutely uniformly, so our product converges, right? So hence, phi converges absolutely and uniformly. On modulus of z less than r, okay? Little r is arbitrary, right? It could have been anything. I can run this scheme for any value of r. So it's homomorphic on every cert, every disk. Therefore, it's entire, right? So phi is actually entire. Phi is entire and vanishes on what? On a n and zero, right? Now, why is this going to be something cool? Because what I can do now, I can say if f is a function that vanishes on that set, so if f is a given function, then we can consider what? Then I can consider for a given function f, it, can we find a function which vanishes on the set of points and call it f of z? Can I find such a function? Well, if f is entire and satisfies this criterion, so does phi. So that would say that f of z over phi of z is what? Is zero free. I know that zero free functions can be written as what? Can be written as the exponential of another entire function because the complex plane is simply connected, right? And this doesn't vanish. This doesn't vanish, neither does e to the entire function. So this gives me a factorization. This says that any such function over here has to look like what? Has to look like e of g of z for some entire function times z to the m, if you want to vanish at zero too, right? Times what? Times the product n goes from 1 to infinity of e n of z over a n. Beautiful. And so now we have our what? So now this is the Weierstrass factorization theorem. It says any function that has zeros at the sequence a n, which goes to infinity, and a, zero, and a, zero, a root at 0, that just gives the z to the m, right? 
can be written as what? The exponential of an entire function times e to the m times one of these canonical products over here, these Weierstrass products. So this is the Weierstrass factorization theorem. In further videos, we're going to take functions that we know vanish at an infinite number of points, like sine and cosine, sinh and cosh, right? And we're going to apply the Weierstrass factorization theorem to them. And we're going to choose carefully. We can actually choose in some sense that we don't need to choose n over here. We can actually get away with putting in smaller numbers for these elementary factors. And that's the basis of Adamard's theorem. Adamard's theorem is much more complicated to prove. We won't prove it. We'll just basically use the same type of arguments on a case-by-case -case basis. And that will, that will convince us how we can use Adamard's theorem in further videos. Thank you very much.